So now let's do another example where there are two forces acting on an object, but they're going to be acting on an angle other than 90 degrees. Because when you're working with 90 degrees, it's pretty easy because then you have a right angle triangle, you can use Sokotoa, etc., etc. What if we have two forces acting on an object? So let's say 40 newtons. And then let's say there's another force acting this way at 30 newtons. And the angle between them now is 60 degrees. Let's find what the resultant and equilibrium force is going to be. So 40 newtons acting on this object in this direction, 30 newtons acting in this direction, 60 degrees between the two forces. So let's start off with finding the resultant. How do we do that? Well, to find the resultant, we got to add these two forces. And we got to add these vectors. So let's start off with one of the vectors. Let's start off with the 40 newton one. So we got 40 newtons going this way. And then we have to add this 30 newton vector to it. Now 30 newtons is going this way. So if we draw that here, it's going to be something like that. Right? We just basically took this vector, shifted it over to add it to the 40 newton vector. So what's the resultant going to be? Well, the resultant is going to start from the tail of the first vector to the head of that last vector. So this here is going to be the resultant vector. So we're going to have to find out, number one, the direction of this resultant vector, and then also, two, the magnitude of it. So how are we going to do that? Well, notice that we can figure out what this angle is here. If this here is 60 newtons, then what we're pretty much doing is we're taking this vector and shifting it over. If you remember that parallelogram, law of vector addition. So if this is 60 degrees, notice that with the z pattern, this would be 60 degrees as well. So the angle over here is basically going to be 180 minus 60 degrees, which is 120 degrees. So this here is going to be 120 degrees. So notice that we can find the magnitude of this resultant using cosine law, right? This is a non-right angle triangle, and we have two sides of the triangle with the angle between them. So we can find out what that opposite side is going to be, which is going to be the magnitude of the resultant. And using cosine law, basically that magnitude squared is going to be one of the sides squared plus one of the other sides squared, minus two times one of the sides times the other side times cos of the angle in that triangle, 120 degrees. Right, so that's the first trick to this question, is realizing that the angle between the forces is not the same as the angle when you end up adding the forces. Right? It's going to be 180 minus that, which is 120 degrees, and that's what goes here when you're solving for that magnitude of the resultant. And when you do that in your calculator, you end up getting 3,700 for that right side, and then we square root both sides to get the magnitude of the resultant on its own, which would be 60.8 newtons. So this vector here, this force, this resultant force, has a magnitude of 60.8 newtons. So now that we have the magnitude of the resultant, let's find out what the direction of it is. And let's start off by finding what the direction of it is relative to that 40 newton force. So let's solve for this theta here in the triangle. How do we do that? Well, notice that we can use sine law. 
So we can take sine of 120 degrees over the opposite side, which we know is 60.8 newtons, which we solved for earlier. And then that is going to equal sine of theta all over the opposite side of theta, which is 30 newtons. So when you do that calculation in your calculator, you end up getting 25 degrees for theta. So that means that this angle here in the triangle is 25 degrees. So this resultant force has a magnitude of 60.8 newtons, and it has a direction 25 degrees relative to that 40 newton force. So this here is relative to the 40 newton force. Now we can also find the direction of this resultant vector relative to that 30 newton force. So if we take this 30 newton force and redraw it over here, so it's going to look something like that. So basically just redrawing this diagram here, this is that 30 newton force. The angle between 40 newtons, 30 newtons, we know is what? 60 degrees. This full angle here is 60 degrees. Well, if this angle here is 25 degrees, then what's this angle going to be? It's basically going to be that 60 degrees minus 25, which would give us 35 degrees. So that resultant vector is either 25 degrees relative to 40 newtons or 35 degrees relative to 30 newtons. So we can also say 35 degrees relative to 30 newtons. So we're done getting all the information about the resultant force. We've got the magnitude and then we got the direction stated in two different ways. What is the equilibrium force going to be? Let's start off by drawing it first on this same diagram. We know the equilibrium force is what? It's the same magnitude as the resultant, but in the opposite direction. So we basically have to take this vector here, which is the resultant vector, and draw another vector with the same magnitude but in the exact opposite direction. So this equilibrium vector, let's call it vector E. Well, we know the magnitude of the equilibrium force is the same as the magnitude as the resultant force, so it's 60.8 newtons as well, but it's in the opposite direction. So let's figure out what's the angle of this equilibrium force relative to that 40 newton force and relative to that 30 newton force. Well, how do we find that? Well, we know that the angle between the equilibrium and the resultant, so this whole angle here is 180 degrees. And we also know that this angle here is 25 degrees, right, between the resultant and the 40 newtons. So we can figure out what this angle is here by just taking 180, subtracting 25. 180 subtract 25 would give us uh, what? That would give us 155 degrees. So this equilibrium vector is 155 degrees relative to 40 newtons. So that's one way to state the direction. Now, what about this angle here relative to the 30 newton force? Well, we know, let me uh, erase this here because we sort of drew it twice. We know the angle between the resultant force and the equilibrium force is always going to be what? 180. So it's also going to be 180 degrees the other way. So whether you go this way or you go the opposite way, 180 either way. So we know 
that the angle between the resultant and 30 newtons is 35 over here. So notice we could figure out this pretty easily. We could just take 180 degrees, subtract 35. 180 degrees subtract 35 would give us 145 degrees. Right, so we can also say that the equilibrium force is 145 degrees relative to that 30 Newton force. Right, so either this angle or this angle, right, relative to the 40 Newton force, relative to that 30 Newton force. So lots going on here. Hopefully you're getting all this. Hopefully I made the diagram big enough so you could see all of the angles. But uh, yeah, whenever you're finding the direction of that equilibrium force, start off by drawing a vector in the opposite direction of the resultant, and then just know that the angle between the resultant and the equilibrium is always going to be 180 degrees, two different ways. So either this way or this way. And then you can just do algebra working with the other angles you have to find those direction angles for that equilibrium force. And then the magnitude of the equilibrium force, very simple, it's always equal to the magnitude of that resultant force.